Today's lesson is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 12, and verses 18b through 20. Beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust, and will not overlook your work and the love you showed for God's own sake in serving the saints, as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who by faith and patience inherit the promises. It is impossible that God would prove false. We who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor for the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain, the Holy of Holies, where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, sisters and brothers, and good grief, what a month this week has been. Our West Coast still burning, though thanks to a shift in the weather, some areas have gotten some rain, and several friends of mine who live in the Pacific Northwest have safe air quality measurements for the first time in a couple of weeks. Tropical storms, several of which have become hurricanes, are stacked up in the Caribbean in record-breaking numbers to the point that they have run out of names for them and they've started again at the beginning with Alpha and Beta and so on and these storms have been making landfall every few days and they don't seem to be slowing down. On the COVID-19 front, as of the day before yesterday, when I happened to see some cable news, 18 states are showing an unsettling increase in numbers, and yes, Tennessee is one of them. And we've just passed 200,000 lives lost. Lord have mercy. Oh, and last night, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a champion for women's rights, and civil rights for all for decades passed away and as that news was breaking there was a nearly five on the Richter scale earthquake in Southern California and that's this week <laughs> mercy there's an old turn of phrase that I've always loved mostly used in Great Britain which dates back to the days of sailing ships before modern navigational equipment came into the picture once a ship was out of sight of any land in all directions, a journey by ship became perilous just because so much of how it would proceed was unknown. Suddenly you were at the mercy of unexpected currents and reefs, storms, or the lack of wind. And so, at sea, or all at sea, came to refer to a state of bewilderment confusion or dangerous uncertainty. And by Wednesday of this past week I kept looking at storms and fires and sickness and so on and I kept having to step away because as I told my little kitty the news has me all at sea and <laughs> I meant it. When I am all at sea our passage from Hebrews often comes to my mind and to my heart. Hope is the anchor which keeps us from being pulled off course by deep currents we cannot see, or driven off course by storms and wind. Maybe hope is one of those necessary paths of righteousness that we can walk when we're following where our shepherd is leading us. And when he began his ministry, the message of Jesus was hope from the very beginning when he shared the words of Isaiah in the synagogue. 
When he taught the multitudes in the Sermon on the Mount, his message to the multitudes began when he revealed the very heart and mind of the Holy One. Among these multitudes of poor country people who gathered there, Jesus let them know that whatever their privileged countrymen might tell them about why they deserved to be poor in spirit, God did not feel that way. God's blessing was upon them. When he healed the lepers, the lame, and the blind, Jesus demonstrated wholeness and restoration for all of God's children, even those who seemed too far gone to save. When he broke the chains, binding tormented souls to the control of unclean spirits, Jesus demonstrated that people do not belong to the realm of the destructive. People are made in the image of God, and our citizenship is in the kingdom of heaven. Those of us who follow where hope leads understand that, yes, the world may seem to be burning all around us, and boy does it seem that way. But if we love one another, as Christ Jesus has loved us, the world burnt to ashes is not how the story is destined to end. Rather, those of us who are following where hope leads into a future none of us can see, know that we must lift up our eyes, for our redemption draweth nigh. We know that an earth restored to wholeness and health, a new heaven and a new earth, has been promised to us, and we trust that it will spring forth in due season. We trust that a day is coming when humankind itself will also be healed and made whole, and the whole of humankind will be the beloved community. The love that we show the world by diligently continuing to do whatever we can to make life better for others, even small things, is a kind of positive contagion. When we can relieve the suffering, strain, or sadness of others, even in the smallest ways, we are declaring hope wins. Keep going. God's people, indeed, take refuge in the promises of the Holy One. And our lesson today reminds us that by faith and patience, we do inherit our portion of those promises. When we follow where hope and where the way of Jesus is leading, we make hope something more than a sweet idea. Our lesson tells us that we realize, meaning we make real the assurance of hope to the very end. So friends, my prayer is that no matter how exhausting our present moment might be, we will keep following that path called hope. We will keep following that path. We'll continue to walk our talk, literally putting feet to our faith and backing up that faith with action and ministry and with every loving choice that we're able to make. Dark days need the light of this hope that we carry. And so, sisters and brothers, my prayer is that our hope will continue to shine. There's an old Jewish legend that I can't point to a place in the Bible for its origin, um, because it was developed when the Jews were studying their law while they were in captivity in Babylon, in the great work that's known as the Talmud. And one of the things that they hit upon was the notion that every generation has 36 righteous people, righteous beyond the ordinary, who are hidden from view. They're not our leaders. They're often not our teachers, at least not in a formal sense. They're not our kings. But the presence of those 36 people scattered throughout the world, they're called the tzaddikim, is enough to keep the weight of the world's sins 
from crashing in on us. Because those people influence those around them, and that influence spreads to those around those whom they have influenced. And that spread of residual righteousness is just enough to change the world and to save it. And someone pointed out last night when Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed and the news broke that there's also a tradition that when someone dies, when a Jewish believer dies on Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of the new year, and that started Friday night at dusk, that means that that person is one of the tzaddikim, one of those hidden righteous ones. And I thought about that. I thought about her example and all of the change she brought about in the world. And it gave me tremendous hope. Because these people aren't considered to be public figures. It's the small and hidden deeds of those who are faithful, who believe that hope can change the world. Those are the deeds that matter. Those are the deeds that save the world. And it gave us great, gave me great hope about us, brothers and sisters. We're a small church, and especially these days, these unusual days of this year that went on forever, <laughs> we may seem to be out of sight, but I know who we are, and I know that our hearts are generous, and that each of us is doing the things that we can do to make the world better for other people, even if they're small, small things. And that's enough to change the world, to transform the world, to transform the heart, and to declare salvation. And so, may we continue to do that, hidden though we might be. May it be so. May we do so. Amen and Amen.